Hey everybody, today we're talking about all-wheel drive vehicles and do you really need them? I've got the wonderful Bonnie Simon with me today who is our resident research expert. We're going to talk about it right now. All right, thanks for joining us. Please don't forget, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. That way you'll be notified every time we do a live video or we post a new video. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. My name is Ronnie Haskins, and today I have with me Bonnie Simon. That's me. Bonnie is our resident sales consultant who is also a master of research. She's got a master's degree in? Uh, it's actually in computer science. Computer science, and she's also been a copywriter. Uh, so when we talk about topics such as all-wheel drive vehicles, she does all the research. I like to know all the details. I Tell can't picture your computer, but I like to know all the details. <laughs> Tell these guys what happened to us two weeks ago, which prompted this video. Well, we had a great big storm. You probably all remember that. It was, there was hardly any visibility and nobody could get anywhere and thousands of people were stuck on the highway. And so that of course brings up the question, do you need all wheel drive around here? Because people will tell you that you need all wheel drive here in Colorado. But is that true? Because you know, you're going to pay more for it. So, so it's worth doing some research into. That storm was called the Bomb Cyclone, for those who aren't aware of it. In Colorado, it was the worst blizzard we've had in years. There were 97 mile an hour winds. I lost a 30 foot tree in the backyard and the trampoline blew down the street about three blocks. It sucked. <laughs> is uh, it somebody and, else's trampoline? No, it's, no, we pulled it back in the yard. <laughs> back in the yard, okay. That was horrible. Either way, yeah, so to give you a little bit more backdrop, there were over a thousand people stranded on the highway and some of the roads in Colorado for an entire 24 hour period because they were stuck. So let's get right into it. All wheel drive vehicles have been brought up to my attention for years when people think they wanna be safer in harsh driving conditions, when they wanna be safer in the snow. And I've always thought that they're not safer because it teaches your kid to do one thing that I can't do in a front wheel drive and that's get moving faster, quicker with still no ability to stop. Let's make that clear. All wheel drive vehicles do not stop your vehicle any faster than a front wheel drive vehicle. That's right. That what I learned from my research was that the, uh, an all wheel drive vehicle, it will, it will help you turn corners. It will help you get started. It, but as Ronnie says, it will not help you stop. And that's something that you really want to think about when you're dealing with a snowstorm or, or even just with ice on the road, that the car is going to feel very normal. It's going to feel like you're able to turn it and it goes where you want it to go. But then when it comes time to stop, if you don't think about that extra stopping distance, you may find yourself crashing into the back of the next car. That's correct, Bonnie. Every time I was in a wreck in the snowstorm when I was living in Minnesota, I was driving a four wheel drive vehicle and I was going by cars. And when it came time to stop, I slid in the curves. Yeah, and by contrast, I grew up in Cleveland. I learned to drive in Cleveland. I never had anything other than a, like the best car was a front wheel drive car, but it was always two wheel drive. And I was never in an accident. I was huh. scared to death, but I was not in an accident. But you learned. Yes, I did learn. So that's the question we're pondering today. Do you need to learn how to drive a front wheel drive or make your life easier, so you think, by having an all wheel drive? Okay, the first thing we're going to go through is the differences between all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. Bonnie, research this. What do you got for us? Well, you might think it's the same thing, and that would be a reasonable thing to think, except that when you go and really look into what the difference is, all-wheel drive sends power. The computer is sending power to the four wheels. It's, it's making all the decisions. You can't make any decisions for the all-wheel drive. And in most vehicles, it's just on all the time. The computer is always making all those decisions. As opposed to four-wheel drive, which you can usually turn on and off, and it's it's a bit more controllable. It also makes the ride bumpier, so all-wheel drive is more comfortable as a general thing. But both of them will use up more fuel. Wow. Okay. Okay, so all-wheel drive vehicles will give you a false sense of security when you're using them. But can you learn how to drive in the snow or inclement weather with a front-wheel drive car? Yeah, you absolutely can. And if you come from a climate like Minnesota or Cleveland, you probably learn to drive in the snow. So you learn things like how to steer into a skid when you need to go slow. Um, in the days before anti-lock brakes, we used to learn how to pump the brakes so that we would slow down without skidding. All of those are learnable skills that now the computer is, is doing for us in the car, but you can still use them. Uh, maybe it's not always a good idea to use them to pump the brakes if they're anti-lock brakes, but learning how to steer into a skid 
and when you need to go slower, how to identify things like black ice. Those are all important to learn even regardless of what you're driving, really. All right, another thing to remember is even if you have an all-wheel drive, Bonnie found out that snow tires are still paramount if you live in a place that has snow on the ground quite often. In Colorado, we have 300 days of sunshine, so we get snow, it goes away. Everybody sees that bomb cyclone and think, oh man, that's how it always is. It's not, right? right but, right. you know, Bonnie, tell us a little bit about why the snow tires matter, even more important than all-wheel drive. Yeah, and even here, I would recommend snow tires if you're doing a lot of driving or if you need to get to work in snowy days. What I learned was that snow tires are what helps you stop. Snow tires stick to the road. They, they're made out of a kind of rubber that when it's cold, they just, they just stick better. They get more purchase as, wow. you're, as you're driving along. And, and I have my experience with snow tires was that I had them on a Honda Civic in Cleveland. Huh. And um, for years, I had driven that Honda Civic home with all wheel, all season tires, my, you know, white knuckle grip trying to get home from work. So I finally bought these snow tires and I, uh, I decided I would test them. So in Cleveland, the snow stays, it starts to snow in November and it doesn't go away. So you get these, uh, these layers of ice and snow. So I drove down an icy side street and I got all the way up to 25 miles an hour, at which point I bravely slammed on the brakes and the car stopped. Wow. And that is how I learned how those are valuable. I also learned that people in Canada, where they have more snow, more people put snow tires on their all-wheel drive vehicles, and that's a good idea. The reason it's a good idea is, is because, as we've talked about, that the, you're going to feel like the car is pretty normal until you try to stop. But with the snow tires, you have a much better chance of, of stopping without a long stopping distance. Okay, so Bonnie just told us how important snow tires are, which I didn't even really have a big grasp on it because I don't use them very often. However, um, there are also some consequences to owning a four, an all-wheel drive or a four-wheel drive unit. We're going to go into those right now. So tell us some of the reasons why some people think they need all-wheel drive and don't need all-wheel drive. And uh, what are the consequences of having an all-wheel drive? Does it cost more? Yeah, all-wheel drive costs more. Sometimes it's an option on a vehicle. Sometimes it comes standard on a vehicle, but the vehicle is going to cost more. The snow tires, you put them on in the winter, but then you take them off again in the summertime. So you're gonna get more than one season out of them. Plus in the summertime, when you've got your all season tires on, your gas mileage is gonna go up. Oh, cool. All right, we also wanna share with you another consequence of owning an all wheel drive. Um, you're gonna pay more for maintenance, right Bonnie? That's right, I, I always forget about that, but that's absolutely true. Yeah, so you have a uh, different type of tire maintenance when you have an all wheel drive unit. You have different moving parts that have to be serviced on that vehicle which drive up your cost over time, not to mention the cars cost more initially. That's true. That, and I think you said that the uh, you have to get both of the tires replaced, that you can't, with a, with a two-wheel drive car, you can replace one tire at a time if you need to, but you can't do that with an all-wheel drive. Yeah, the factory recommends that if you have a bad tire on an all-wheel drive unit that you replace all four of them, ah, not just one. Nice. Yeah. Because the tread has to stay similar for that system to function properly. So you want to make sure you do that. Okay, so our big three takeaways for all-wheel drive units. Um, it's not going to give you more security on the road as far as stopping. No argument about being able to move in the snow and ice and sand and wetness, but nobody's going to be able to stop faster. So when you're thinking about an all-wheel drive for your kid, beware that they'll be able to move. They won't be able to stop. If you have the opportunity, try to practice driving in snow in your in your two-wheel drive car learn how to steer into skids learn how to to stop slowly you can even find information about how to do that online and then just you know go out into a parking lot and practice at a slow speed takeaway number three what you got bonnie snow tires buy snow tires or at least look into buying snow tires because no matter what you're driving your snow tires are going to help you get where you want to go safely i think the big takeaway for me is guys all will drive cars uh, don't take the thinking out of driving. You know, you still have to really be aware of the stopping potential of that vehicle. You're not gonna be able to stop even though you're moving really fast. And I have this conversation with clients quite often. So think about it, process it, understand you're gonna spend more money, understand you're gonna have to pay more to maintain that car. And you still may need snow tires depending on where you live. All right, to sum it up, when you're considering an all-wheel drive vehicle, just keep in mind you may not need may not be a necessity. 
And also keep in mind, it's gonna cost you a little bit more money. Bonnie did some research on this for us, and we're also posting a link to a video in this video. So in the comments box below, there'll be another video that you can watch that will show you some all-wheel drive stuff that she researched. So. And a blog. Don't forget to go to our blog at streamsautosearch.com and you can read all about it. And the blog. So we'll post that in the comments box as well. Thanks for joining us today. And as usual, please subscribe to the channel. I'm Ronnie Haskins. And I'm Bonnie Simon. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great day.